Welcome in to the 2023 MLS Cup Final Preview. It all comes down to Columbus and LAFC in the final on Saturday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Now, last week in the conference finals, I went with both teams to score in Cincinnati and Columbus in the over 2.5 with LAFC and Houston, and that's a check and a check to both of those games. So let's see if we can end the season on a high here in an exciting MLS Cup Final between Columbus and LA at Lower.com Field. Let's give a quick recap of the conference finals. Now, over in the East Final, it was Cincinnati and Columbus. Cincinnati was up 2-0, and it could have been much more if not for some offsides and some big saves by Columbus keeper Patrick Schulte. It was still 2-0, though, with 20 minutes to go in the game. Wilfred Nancy from Columbus made some key substitutions. He subbed on Julian Gressel, Christian Ramirez. Soon after that, Gressel made a cross of the ball, and it resulted in an own goal. So it was 2-1, 75 minutes into the game. And then in the 86th minute, Columbus was passing the ball within the 18-yard box. It falls to Diego Rossi. He scores a tie-in goal. Basically, Columbus took over this game from the 75 minutes on in that last quarter of the game. Going into extra time, they end up getting the winner with another sub, Molino crossing the ball into the box with Cucho heading it over to Ramirez to head it home for the winner and send Columbus into the final. Now, it's another rare road playoff win for Columbus as they are just 2, 5, and 11 all time on the road, but they've now won their last two on the road this playoffs now. They won't have to worry about that here as they'll be at home hosting this game. If we look at the stats from that Eastern final, Columbus had 64% possession. They led in shots, tw shots 26 to 11, shots on target 8 to 6, and corners 8 to 3. Their other playoff games before that, they beat Atlanta 2-0 at home in round 1, game 1, then they lost in game 2, 4-2 in Atlanta, and then won game 3, 4-2 back home in Columbus in the conference semifinals. They went into Orlando and came away with a 2-0 win. Now that game did, though, end drawn 0-0 in regulation and needed extra time. Now let's switch over to the Western final. It was LAFC and Houston. LAFC, they got plenty of early chances in the game. They came out strong. Carlos Vela having some chances. There was a big save at the other end by Maxime Crepeau to keep things tied. There was more chances by Vea after that, but there was multiple offsides that denied him of a goal. Then LAFC opened the scoring late in the first half. Came off a corner kick. Chiellini heading on goal. Hollingshead scoring off the rebound. That's his third goal in the playoffs. Was Puts him only behind Dennis Bowanga and Cucho with four, uh, with, as each of those players have four goals in the playoffs. Now, LA's second goal came off a of Palacios cross in the second half. That goal got kicked in for an OG from Franco Escobar in the 80th minute, and it was game over from there. LAFC overall definitely dominated the chances in this game, even though they allowed Houston to have basically all of the ball, and they trusted they would have more game changers to score when they got the ball, and they certainly did. In that use that strategy to their advantage. Stats in the game, Houston had 71% possession, but LA had that shots edge at 18 to 10, shots on target 6 to 5, and the corners 10 to 3. LA's other playoff games, they beat Vancouver 5 to 2 at home and 1-0 on the road in round 1. Then in the conference semifinals, they went on the road in Seattle and won 1-0. So it's three straight clean sheets now for LA in the playoffs, and they're undefeated in seven games going back into the regular season. Let's look at the odds now for Saturday's MLS Cup Final. I'm looking over at bet 365 right now. Columbus to win in regulation is at plus 120. The draw 250. LAFC plus 220. Now to advance and win the trophy by any means, so in regulation or extra time or in penalties, Columbus is odds on at minus 163, while LAFC are plus 120. Looking at some of the scoring markets in this game, bets on over 2.5 goals is minus 118, under 2.5, minus 106. Both teams to score, minus 143. Both teams to score, no, plus 105. Now, if you want to get involved in the goal scoring props, let's take a look at those as well and see which players are favored to get on the score sheet. And it's no surprise that Cucho Hernandez and Dennis Buanga lead the scoring odds at plus 120 and plus 160, respectively. Buanga won the Golden Boot with 20 goals, along with seven assists in the regular season. Overall, he's 37 goals in all competitions this season, which is just one shy of the 2019 record held by his teammate, Carlos Vea. Cucho had 16 goals, 11 assists. He was third in total goal contributions. He leads all playoff scoring right now with four goals and two assists. Buanga is tied in the, in the scoring, though. If you just look at goals, he also has four goals. For Columbus, Christian Ramirez now has back-to-back game-winning goals coming in as a sub. He's priced at plus 187 as the third most favored player to score. Thea is the next LAFC member who makes an appearance in the odds 
at plus 210. Now, if you were looking for a long shot value bet here, you could look to LA defender Ryan Hogshead, who has three playoff goals, and he was third in team scoring this season in the regular season with seven goals. He's priced way down the list at 7-1 to one odds. Now, Hollingshead has 15 goals in 84 games in all competitions for LAFC in his career, despite being a defender. So that would be a good value bet there. Now let's look at some stats and trends for this game. Let's run off a bunch of key numbers from the season. Columbus in goals, goals for Columbus was first overall. LAFC were ninth. Goals against Columbus were tied in 13th. LAFC were fifth. XG, Columbus first. LAFC third. XGA, Columbus ninth. LAFC sixth. Non-penalty XG per 90, Columbus 1st, LAFC 4th, Shots, Columbus 2nd, LAFC 1st, Shots on target, Columbus 4th, LAFC 2nd, Shots allowed, Columbus 3rd, LAFC 2nd, Shots on target allowed, Columbus were tied for 13th, LAFC 3rd, Attacking 3rd touches, Columbus 1st, LAFC 4th, Penalty area touches, Columbus 1st, LAFC 2nd, Attacking 3rd touches allowed, Columbus 2nd, LAFC 5th, and Penalty area touches allowed, Columbus 6th and LAFC 2nd. Possession-wise, Columbus had the most possession on average in the league per game at 57.1, while LAFC were 10th at 51.2. Now, those are lots of numbers that I just threw at you, but basically, to just summarize it, if you were following along, most of all those numbers are very top, uh, ranked very high, so both Columbus and LAFC have both been great offensively, Columbus being exceptionally great offensively, LAFC has been strong defensively as well. And while Columbus hasn't necessarily been poor defensively, they have given up a fair amount of shots. They are only 13th in goals allowed. So that would be the one weakest spot amongst the two teams would be the Columbus defense. Let's get into the best bet for this game and give a little summary of some more betting stats here. There's little head-to-head -head history to look at. The teams did not play each other this season. So overall, their head-to-heads. There's only been three all-time meetings between them. LAFC has won them all. 2-0 in 2022. 3-0 in 2019 and 2-0 in 2018. These teams are both well-coached as well. LAFC head coach Steve Trundolo has yet to lose an MLS Cup playoff game. And if he wins on Saturday and gets that trophy, that would make him the second coach in history to win back-to-back -back titles in his first two seasons in the league. And Columbus as well, they have Wilfred Nancy as their head coach. It's his first season with the team in Columbus after being with Montreal last year. In the last two years, he has the most regular season wins, 36, and is tied with Jim Curtin of Philadelphia for the most points, 122, in that time as a head coach. He's also a two-time Coach of the Year finalist. But let's let, get back to some stats on the field and some betting trends. Now, the crew averaged the highest possession of any team this season. They're likely going to do so again here. LAFC were more than willing to concede possession to Houston, and it worked in their advantage. They'll probably do the same. They can take the same approach here. The main difference I see, though, is the Dynamo lacked quality finishers to actually take advantage of all that possession that they had. Columbus, that's not the, that won't be the case here, as they certainly do have players capable of scoring. If you've been betting on crew games this season, you'll know that their games have produced goals and lots of them. In the 45 overall games they've played in all competitions, there have been at least two goals in 42 of them. Also, in those 45 games, they've scored in an incredible 41 games. However, they also have conceded in 34. So that's going back to what I just said before, that despite they, them scoring a lot, they also are known to concede goals. For LAFC, their games have also seen two or more goals in 40 of their 55, 51 across all of their games in different competitions this year. So I think, based on all that, the safest way to bet this game is probably to bet on the goals market and not worry about a winner. But if I had to pick, probably going to lean LAFC, especially at this underdog price, giving them the better value. This is their third final of the season. They previously lost the, two, the first two finals they made it to losing to Mexican opponents in both the CCL as well as the Campeones Cup Final. They'll have that extra motivation and not want to go 0-3 in finals, which would be a very poor distinction. And they also want to be the first team to win back-to-back -back cups since their crosstown rivals, the LA Galaxy, who did so in 2011 and 2012. But home field is very important in MLS, and five of the last six hosting teams have won the title on their pitch in the final. Columbus, if we look at them specifically this season, they have just one home loss in their past 29 home games in all competitions, going all the way back into last season, going back to August 2022. They're also undefeated in each of their past 17 at home, so home field should be a huge advantage for them. Still, like I said earlier, if either team has a weakness, it has to be the Columbus defense. Amongst the 18 playoff teams that made it this year, the 46 goals they conceded was the sixth most of those teams. And that issue has continued as well in the playoffs, where they have given up eight goals in five games. 
LAFC were the more balanced team this year. They scored plenty of goals themselves, but the 39 goals they conceded were the fifth fewest overall in MLS. So if we put all that together, I think the best bet, if you are okay with a little bit shorter odds, you can still find both teams to score at minus 140 over at Caesars. If you want a little bit better odds, I don't think betting a little bit more than a uh, little bit, few more than two goals is a bad bet either. You go both teams scoring over 2.5 at plus 120 odds at bet 365. And like I said, if I had to lean, I'd probably go LAFC to advance, and you can get that at plus 120 as well. So there we have it. That's the last game of the season in the books. I've been breaking down MLS games all season long from week one back in February through the League's Cup in the summer months and all the way to Saturday's final game. So thank you to everyone who's been watching these MLS videos all season, liking, commenting, sharing your picks. Hopefully some of the stats and bets that I've given all year long have helped us all make some money. Be sure to stay tuned to this channel for more picks from other sports in the MLS offseason, like the Champions League, Europa League, NHL, NFL, and more. Good luck, everybody, this weekend.